again, everyone. So it is later in the day. It's still Saturday, October 2nd. Uh, we are on the west side of Okefenokee now. And what we're going to be doing is road cruising at night for snakes and any other reptiles or wildlife that cross the road. So it, right now it's quarter of seven. So sunsets a little after seven. So getting out to the end of this road and we're gonna work our way back into town as the evening turns into night and see what's crossing the road. The surrounding habitat's really good. Um, a lot of wetlands and so I'm thinking potentially Nerodia, maybe a cottonmouth, who knows. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what crosses the road. Hopefully something crosses the road. Um, but we'll soon find out either way. Hey everyone, so directly offshore we got an alligator who's swimming away. This is a good size gator, probably close to the one that, about the size of the one we found earlier today. So never, never get tired of seeing these guys. All right, everyone, we got our first snake of the night. This is a ribbon snake. Pretty cool to see this guy on the road. He's actually very defensive for a ribbon snake. Normally they, they're skittish, but I've never been bitten buy one before. This guy is, uh, he's a little agitated to say the least. We're going to grab some photos of him and then we're going to keep on moving. All right, everyone, so we got this tiny little toad over here, just sitting on the side of the road. I think there might be more up ahead, but the nightlife is starting to move, so this is really exciting. Here's our second toad of the night. I actually don't know what the species of this guy is. You can see on his dark spots, he has multiple warts, so it's not an American toad. My guess is this could be a Fowler's, but I don't know if we're even in the range of Fowler's toads, so he moved it over here. I'm gonna try and grab a quick photo of this guy, and then we will keep on moving. We got another toad in the road tonight. I'm gonna go off on a limb and say that this is a Fowler's toad. There you go, buddy. So here is another one of those Fowler's toads, and then you can see with the eye shine, there are two deer that are right over here. How's it going, friends? Just staring right at us. So we got a young alligator over here. You can see, maybe you can see the eye shine, but I'd say he's about maybe three feet long. Really, you're not getting a good glimpse of him because of the lighting. Oh, there he goes. And he's off. We have ourselves a southern leopard frog, everyone, right over here. You can see the green on him. That's a southern leopard frog right there. We are outside of the range of the pickerel frog, so that frog we saw earlier, it was a southern leopard frog. So, really exciting. Whoa, did you see that? That was a southern leopard frog, everyone. 
I don't even know if I got a, the initial shot of him, but he just yeeted somewhere in here in this tall grass. Um, right over there, you can see is our friend, another alligator, the eye shine that's reflecting. So American alligators, they have the eye shine, but it's more of like a, almost like a purplish color. Oop, there he is. That's the leopard frog. And then there's the gator dead ahead. I'm going to try and get a shot of this gator. My truck's over there, and then we're going to start driving down this road and see what else we can find. Well, this is a big, big moment, everyone. This is my lifer cottonmouth. I believe this is a Florida cottonmouth, and he's just posing right over here for us. Wow, this is awesome. We got a little crayfish right in here. You can see him moving along, um, burying himself currently in the mud. Uh, we've pulled off to the side of the road. There's a little pond over here. There may have been a gator that moved, um, but this would be an excellent place to see a cottonmouth just basking, or not really basking at night, but just resting on the side of the wetland here. Um, if I find anything here that's pretty cool, I'll be sure to show you, but I'm gonna keep on looking in the meantime. Buddy, I have no idea how this happened. Somehow this snake was lying across the road. I somehow did not run it over and it is here. This is another cottonmouth, our second in the night and we were finally able to get some good photos of this guy. I'm gonna try and run back over to my truck to grab my macro lens before he takes off and see if we can get some better up close shots of him. But holy cow, I'm so happy this snake survived. After I get some done taking photos of him, I'm going to help him get off the road, but this is incredible. Cottonmouth number two. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful sunny day here in southeastern Georgia. Um, it is Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, and we are on day two of our herping adventure, I guess, in Okefenokee. Uh, last night, I ended up spending um, the night in some town outside of Okefenokee, and we're working our way back in there this morning. Um, pretty productive last night in terms of the road cruising. In fact, yesterday was just so productive. I ended up finding four lifers, the eastern fence lizard, then the frogs and the toads that we saw last night. Those were actually southern toads. I was able to confirm that. And southern toads, we uh, last night I was saying, assuming that they were Fowler's toads, but we are beyond the range of Fowler's toads. We're too far south. So those were southern toads. The southern leopard frog is also a separate species from the northern leopard frog, so that's technically a lifer. And then last night, we found a few cottonmouths, which were absolutely ex exciting. Um, they were one of the main reasons why I came out to Okefenokee, just to see them. Um, but what we're gonna be doing today is we're working our way back into Okefenokee. We're gonna poke around for a little bit, and then I'm probably gonna head back. Um, right now, if we don't really find much, I'm satisfied based on yesterday's encounters alone. Um, but we'll see what success we have today, and hopefully I'll be able to provide some um, interesting footage for you. Okay, everyone, so last night when we were driving down this road over here, we ended up finding this cottonmouth that was in the process of dying. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the heart in me to put the snake out of its misery. So I moved it off the side of the road over here, and here is the snake this morning. And just to give you a scale as to how big this snake is, I don't have a tape measure on me to estimate it, but I would say this snake's at least three feet long, probably closer to four feet in length. And cottonmouths, that's the typical range. They can get up to four feet long. There have been records of them that have been longer. Now, a lot of other people, when they see a big snake moving near the water, they think 
it's a cotton mouth, but the, most of the time they're actually seeing water snakes, which are Nerodia. They're a completely different species. They're non-venomous snakes, so cotton mouths are venomous. They're in the genus known as Echistridon. Another snake that's in the genus Echistridon are the copperheads. So cotton mouths are very closely related to copperheads. Now, if you look, you can't really see it here. Um, this little hole where my thumbs point to, that's the nostril. There's another tiny hole and you can't really see it. Good, but right there, this hole here is the heat sensing pit. Um, you can kind of see if we flip the cot cotton mouth on this side here. So here's the eye, the nostril, this little hole. That's a pit organ. Uh, what it allows the cotton mouth to do is they can lie motionless. And they basically use this organ to detect differences in temperature in their surrounding environment. It, it can sense the difference between, say, the guardrail over there, the grass. It essentially gives them heat vision. Water snakes don't have that. But some other features, cottonmouths are very, you can see, are just for my hand for reference, they're very thick-bodied snakes compared to the water snakes, which can be too. But also, it's really the tail. That's the difference. Cottonmouths have bigger, wider tails than, say, the non-venomous snakes do. So here's the tail for reference. Um, and then again, the head is completely different. Obviously, the water snakes don't have that pit organ and the venom, which we really, you can't really see it and I, on this guy, but cottonmouths have these, or you can kind of see it right here, are these specialized fangs that they use to venomate their prey, which Nerodia in general do not have that mechanism. The northern limit for cottonmouths is southeastern Virginia and the Great Dismal Swamp. So this is a snake that's really only found in the southeastern U.S. Um, we are in Okefenokee, at, near the southern end of the range, uh, or southeastern Georgia. This is actually a Florida cottonmouth, or very likely Florida cottonmouth. The other subspecies, the eastern cottonmouth, is found throughout the rest of Georgia. There is some integration between the easterns and the Florida cottonmouth. But this, because we're so, we're basically on the Georgia-Florida line, this is a Florida cottonmouth. Um, but again, here's the reference. Pretty good sized snake. Um, unfortunate that it had to meet its end. Well, we got our first herp of the day. This is a turtle. And I think this might be... Whew. So this was actually my lifer eastern chicken turtle, and if I had known at the time, I would have had been far more appreciative and enthusiastic. I plan on discussing the chicken turtle more in depth in a comprehensive video on Blanning's turtles that is currently in production, but for now I'll say this. I managed to find two chicken turtles on my trip to Okefenokee, and both were either in or on the edge of shallow pools. The broad yellow stripe on the forelegs is also a good diagnostic feature to ID a chicken turtle. I'm hopeful that I'll find more chicken turtles during my time in Georgia, but for now, we return to your regularly scheduled broadcast. Let's try, let's see if my thing won't. Come on. So, so I've never seen a turtle do this before. Come on, do it again. Just lunging forward like that. That is a really interesting behavior. These southern herps, they're, they got a feistiness to them. Okay, everyone, this is a sad sight to see. This is a cottonmouth that had gotten struck by a car last night. Um, a younger one, though, maybe only a foot and a half to two feet in length uh, not a big snake but it's really sad to see one dead on the road like this i cruised this area last night too so this cottonmouth must have crossed the road after i had left but that's sad to see that's i think our fourth cottonmouth of the trip and unfortunately two of them had been killed
Okay, everyone, so here's cottonmouth number five, and unfortunately, just like the others, this one is dead. You can see it got hit here. So it's five cottonmouths, two of them were DORs, and one of them was dying. So that's really unfortunate. Okay, everyone, so we're gonna change it up here a bit. I explored a little bit of the west side of Okefenokee, and most of it is boating. Uh, there are really no trails to explore whatsoever. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back over to the east side of Okefenokee um, because we have to head in that direction to go home anyhow. So I'm gonna go there and explore for a little bit. So it's probably gonna take me over an hour to get to where we were yesterday. Um, if I see anything along the way, of course I'll stop and film, but we're gonna head back over east and Hopefully I'll touch back with you soon with some more content. Okay everyone, so this unfortunately has been a morning of DORs. This is a soft shell turtle that we just found here on the side of the road. That was struck by a car sometime last night. Really unfortunate, these are such unique turtles because they don't have scutes on their shells, so it's a very soft material, um, a more leathery material. This is a very small soft shell, and this is a surrounding wetland that I was in. So it must have been crossing from this very busy road over here. Um, so this is quite unfortunate. I don't really want to be showing all these DORs, but unfortunately this is it happens. Roads are a death sentence for reptiles, amphibians, and other wildlife who want to cross them. And this is such a cool species not to post a photo or footage of. So, dead softshell turtle on the highway. Hi everyone. So we are back on the east side of Okefenokee. Um, I'm going to be spending a couple hours... I'm going to be spending a couple hours here. Uh, since we were basically here yesterday, um, not there isn't much more that I need to see. Uh, there was one target in particular that we haven't found on the trip yet, and that was the pygmy rattlesnake. Uh, we went to an area yesterday and we're exploring where there have been some recent sightings and didn't find anything. So I'm probably just gonna specifically target pygmies on the east side. I don't have much confidence that I'll find them, but you never know. If I find anything else that's exciting, of course I'll share, but um, as for right now, we're just walking through this little stretch of pine over here. Um, this is also a type of habitat that you can find pygmy rattlesnakes in, but we're just keeping our eyes peeled for anything that catches our interest, and hopefully I'll come back to you with some interesting content that maybe includes a pygmy rattlesnake. All right, everyone, so we have a good-sized green mole here who's just... Or was over here. So we are continuing our search for a pygmy rattlesnake. Going through these types of habitat, even though it's completely different, but this style of searching, Reminds me a lot of when I was up, lived up north and I would look for hognose snakes in Pine Barren Forest. Um, similar type of ecosystem here, but we're looking for a very tiny snake that really only gets at max two feet in length. And usually a lot of these palmetto bushes over there, sometimes you can see them basking on like a palm or something like that. I've never seen a pygmy rattlesnake before. I know they've been sighted in this area, so we're going to keep on looking and hopefully we'll find something interesting. If not a pygmy, maybe another snake, reptile, or amphibian. I ended up finding no pygmy rattlesnakes, or other snakes for that matter, during the rest of the time I spent in Okefenokee. Even though I didn't find all my targets, I still considered the trip to be a major success. In total, I found at least 11 species, and 7 of which were lifers. Finally being able to see and photograph a cottonmouth was especially rewarding, 
along with that surprise chicken turtle encounter. Moving to Georgia just two months ago, I am excited to see more of the incredible herptofauna biodiversity the South has to offer. I also plan on sharing more of my experiences with reptiles and amphibians from the Northeast as well. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed what you saw and want to see more related content, please consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned because more is on the way.